the power of the vote is incredible. And it's a reminder that this year, um, voters have the power to vote for hope and change. I hope they do. Hope and change. Isn't that the Obama slogan? Hope and change is very powerful. And if you can actually stick to that and invigorate people and let them get, if you like, infected by your own optimism, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Politics and the, and the idea of, of moving society along. He talked about house building, he talked about dental appointments. I mean, that isn't going to set the world on fire. But yeah, the key words were hope and change. But then, of course, Sarah Palin used to tease Obama a lot and say, how's but the hopey, lost. changey stuff working <laughs> for you? Of course, and she yeah, lost. Yeah, Obama won twice, so it, did, it does work. Yeah. It, does work. Stuff it does work, but you need a bit more ballast behind the hopey, changey yeah. stuff. I think the question of who's on the ballot in every state uh, should be left to the people. Uh, of the United States of America. The Supreme Court will find a way to make to yeah. allow Donald Trump to, to stand for election again. I don't think this... This time around? Yes, I think in February. They'll have to find some technicality. We, we, we talk Otherwise, about... it will look as if the, the courts are deciding who the next president is, not the people, and like that's not a good look. and that's just, a risk. Rachel, yeah. the thing I was going to just touch on as well, so clearly the special relationship would be supremely tested if this happened. At the, at the moment, the last couple of years, do you think it's actually been that strong, the special relationship? Um, not, not especially, no. no. I mean, I don't think Biden's particularly Anglophile. I mean, uh, he's, he's very... He, he loves his Irish roots, mm -hmm. we saw that. Um, I don't think he's particularly bothered with us. I mean, Donald Trump, as we know, had a, a massive crush on the Queen, and that was what he wanted, really. He really wanted to be present so he could go and have tea at Windsor, let's face it. And uh, uh, he no, that achieved was, it. That, he that was that. a silly thing. Else. True, <laughs> but silly thing to it say, was, nonetheless. No, no, I mean, yeah. I think I was covering it at the time. I mean, he absolutely adored yeah. that moment. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Trump, as you heard Nigel Scheinwald and, and you've heard many others say, is, and he has declared, that this will be Trump untrammeled. He went as far as say, I will be a dictator for the first day. He said, I will use my Justice Department to go after all my enemies. I am your retribution. What mm -hmm. does that even mean? About immigrants, he said, they infect the blood of Americans. This is Nazi talk. Mm -hmm. This is really dangerous. And this is, he has declared what he will do. Now, some say, your fears are just the fears of demented liberals. Others say that actually he is a genuine, real and proven threat to not only US but also global democracy. But because we have managed the economy responsibly, uh, because we brought inflation down, we are starting to see things turn a corner. Uh, and because of that, we are able now to cut taxes like national insurance, mm -hmm. uh, which is a tax cut for 27 million people uh, across the country, which is very good news. Right, the, the weird thing, I think, about this tax cut uh, argument is it's clearly something that Tory MPs like, Tory members uh, like. And yet the big argument going into the election is going to be about the state of public services, about the fact that uh, there's massive waiting lists, about the fact that, you know, schools are crumbling around children's ears. And so, and if you look at the polls, the public's pr split pretty evenly down the middle between people who think we tax too much and spend too much and people who think we don't <laughs> spend enough. And if the argument is about sort of restoring the public services... Most people know, well, that doesn't mean... You can't have, although Boris Johnson did manage to successfully basically promise this in mm -hmm. 2019, high spending and low taxes. That just doesn't work. Some 70 countries this year where, where some wow. form of elections are, yeah. are taking place. <laughs> and, Christiane, I want to come back to a question I raised at the top of the show. I mean, do you think democracy will flourish this year? Or I do you tell think... you what, it's really in question, I'm sorry to say, because many of the analysts who are watching this say... Uh, right now, there are potentially more illiberal democracies and dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, than there are actual liberal democracies. So this is a huge, huge indicator of where the world is going to be going. And as I said, the biggest ones are in the... Look at the United States. Look, Russia is a fake election. Putin will win and be there until he dies. Uh, we've got India claiming to be a, a democracy. It's pretty illiberal. You've got South Africa, huge amount at stake in South Africa. North, All of Europe up there. Look at it, mm. just about. And I might mention also Taiwan next week. Yes. If that this goes year, wrong, right now. If yeah. that goes wrong and China moves in on Taiwan, we've got a, a war on three yeah. fronts. I think in, in terms of democracy, and we think, you know, the, the problems with democracy are ha things that happen elsewhere. I think the big question is what happens after an election? Do the losers accept the result? Do the smaller parties, your yep. Nigel Farage, your reforms, uh, your, I don't know, Lee Anderson, does everyone accept the result and move on. We've seen what's happened in America. Yeah. The, the, bur mm. you know, the, the, the boasts of being the, the home of democracy, accepting the result and moving on 
is a really important part of that. And, and I, that's become a thing since Trump. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. become a thing around the world. It's been mainstreamed, and, and yeah. we, need, we need to be careful of that.